This is a story about Matthew and his grandmother. They stand on the deck of the cabin looking out over the forest. How peaceful it looks. I wonder what they will find. Uh, we've been making a claymation, like stop motion. It's um about the grandmother and her grandson in their cabin in the woods and they like look for animals in the woods. And it's uh, called What the Animals Are Doing. It all came to be when I met with the Aboriginal support workers going on a year and a half ago and we had just kind of discussed how we could implement um, more programs involving digital literacy and project-based learning with Aboriginal students and how we would go about making the maker space kind of make a connection to do so. And Teresa had immediately piped up and said, oh me, me, I have some great stories. I would love to really work with you. And so it just so happened I had written a script on uh, what the animals are doing in the forest. And so we took that as our guide and I think it ended up turning out really well. This is a porcupine, the chubby raccoon, a bear, the eagle, and the deer. We had started getting together once a week for an hour and planning what we were going to do, what kind of mediums we were going to use, with how would we insert the technology piece as well as keeping the traditional storytelling and cultural elements. And the students were the ones who really kind of geared towards the claymation stop motion mode, so that's what we chose to do. Look, Grandmother, to the right, it looks like the squirrels and chipmunks are gathering acorns and pine cones. And over there, there's an eagle sitting by the tree where the squirrels are playing. And there's a rabbit nearby looking at them. For Matthew and Grandmother, we had um, a 3D printer that printed the shoulders and head, and then we covered it in clay. It's pretty much just sitting back and watching them create. About half of the group really took to the technology aspect and the other half were more than happy to just kind of sit by and watch and then work on the more hand crafting side, which is, it's a true way to the maker space, maker education concept of like where everybody getting together and sharing talents and interests. So I was the narrator in the, well, like the script. I like, like hands-on stuff. So I liked making some of the animals. 3D printing creating the objects. This is the um, layout to the butterfly. I was the background painter and kind of the designer for the backgrounds and the sets. I'm an artist and it's what I love to do. At some point, we'd like to see the translation happen in Mi'kmaq. And then we hope that it just goes right across the country and that other schools will want to kind of do the same idea, maybe interpret it in their own language. I think that they're taking away the experience of the pride to see something from the very beginning to the very end. So with that kind of pride comes the ownership over their education and how they're going to take it to the next level. They're well, I'd like to think that they got a connection with their culture through being in touch with Mother Earth and understanding the relationship with the forest and, and uh, the animals. One of the things that kind of has really stuck with me is that um, there was a tree that fell and um, Miss Muse was like, well, this is like a gift from Mother Nature, and she provided it for us, so. I guess my favorite part was like seeing how it was made. The fact that I would be able to look through different pictures and be able to copy them and make them real, I guess. That all animals have different meanings, I guess. Like, I do this sometimes with my grandmother. Like, I'm part, like, a little bit Mi'kmaq. And like this story is like all about like the Mi'kmaq culture. It felt good knowing that I was a part of something that other schools and kids will be able to see. We've kind of created history. Uh, it gives the kids um, a chance to have a little pride in their culture, but also to be excited that this is a project that they're going to still be able to see 20 and 25 years from now, right?